All right, so something else that they're very engaged in is the idea of subverting institutions via one-sided interfaith dialogues. How many of you guys have participated in any of these interfaith dialogues? <coughs> yep, I've been involved in it, and there's, uh, it's very interesting when you get in there. I mean, there's a lot of very well-intentioned people. There's a lot of uh, very um, well-intentioned Christians that I've gone to some of these uh, exercises, but they're not armed with the truth of Christianity to go off and recognize it. Just like I was talking about earlier, if you don't know the Constitution, you're not going to be able to defend it. If you don't know the Bible, you're not going to be able to defend your faith. A lot of folks going in there very unarmed in regards to what God is telling them, and, and it gets to the point where they're listening to anything their itchy ears want to hear. And, uh, and so some of these interfaith dialogues are essentially being used to go off and promote things like these speech codes, things like these uh, others. They're trying to go off and um, uh, so essentially push uh, Islam into our churches. And uh, it's, it's kind of a scary little trend line that's going on. Now, I'm okay with talking and having dialogue, but it's got to be a two-way dialogue, right? And more often than not, that's not what's happening here. And this particular movie here, Waking in uh, Oak Creek, they were using the Sikh religion and some attacks upon Sikhs that are, it's uh, not even Muslim, but people think that they're Muslim, mm -hmm. so that they were trying to create a little, you make them into the victims, and then by association, it's Muslims that are the victims. It's subtle what they do, but it's, a, and it's an attempt to go off and, and say, uh, you know, we're generally, we love our neighbor as ourselves, we want to go off and love others, and they're trying to use that to go off and um, create sympathy for things that we shouldn't have as much sympathy for. Now, I mean, I'm not promoting the stuff that happened in well, um, Waking in Oak Creek, but they're trying to make this association with people that were genuinely persecuted, and it's just not the case. Um, uh, Sharia compliant finance. And they're going, gosh, how am I going to find an example of that here in the state of Michigan? Well, you know what I did? How many of you guys are familiar with a restaurant chain called Le Chiche? Detroit it's area. In the Detroit area, they were busted for <coughs> funneling about $20 million to uh, Hezbollah um, back in uh, well, quite a few years ago. Well, the way that they did that was via something called a zapper, which is a, a, an attachment that you put into cash registers. Essentially, you uh, uh, for cash transactions, um, you ring up a $5 transaction if it's, as if it's a $4 transaction. That means you're, and essentially you don't pay sales tax on it. You pocket the sales tax, and that's extra money that you can put towards nefarious activities off the books. Well, we have this finance system um, embedded here in the state of Michigan already. It's one of the things I want to do as governor is make sure that we've got forensic auditing capability on a county level to go off and address this, um, because this is another way of going off and cutting off funding streams for um, terrorist activities. Another thing, Sharia and American courts. Now, I couldn't find any specific uh, Michigan examples. Uh, Dick, did you seem to remember last time we were talking, you had some specific Michigan examples potentially. Or, but the bottom line is people will say, as soon as you say Sharia and American courts, um, people say, oh, that's fictitious, that's never happened, or anything else. Well, no, it's actually documented. And it's been used to adjudicate at least 27 case, uh, cases in 23 states. And even if you look at um, Islamic sites, they actually claim credit for actually more than this in many cases. A lot of these are dealing with uh, wedding or uh, marriage issues in particular, but uh, ultimately it comes down to whether or not women have equal rights in a marriage, and they don't under Sharia law. All right, the last one is. They want to place Muslim brothers in positions in which they can exercise influence. I can tell you there's, besides the bicyclist lobby <laughs> and the LGBT lobby, the, one of the most aggressive lobbyists that you'll ever find here are in the Muslim community. And uh, they particularly target me because of where I live in my district. And they've constantly been promoting or uh, asking for me to go off and sponsor certain activities. and I, I've consistently refused um, and uh, stating that uh, until you can affirm 
that uh, you know there's not three classes of people in the world that we're all created equal. There's not a such thing as a male Muslim, a female Muslim, and a uh, people of the book, which is most of us in this room here. Um, then uh, I have a tough time going off and sponsoring that and lending my name to it. So. Um, but that doesn't keep them from putting pressure on. There's a lot of pressures that are being applied in our society right now. You're seeing um, Muslim legislators in the state legislature. Um, and you're seeing also a push for at the local level with city councils. So Hamtramck is now the first majority Muslim city council. Um, but we also have somebody that I will likely be running against in the general election, Dr. Abdul Sayed whose uh, parents have apparently have ties to Muslim Brotherhood back in Egypt. Um, this is scary stuff. He's proposed pushing for sanctuary states, um, uh, for Michigan to be a sanctuary state. He's very charismatic. He's got uh, a lot of financial support. About 45% of it is coming from out of the state. Um, it's a big deal, and I've debated him twice already, and, and one, one was at Wayne State University Med School, and I'm happy to say all the docs are coming up to me afterwards, not to him, even though he's a doctor, but he's got the support of folks like uh, Bill Clinton, who gave him a shout out at the U of M commencement address. He's got Linda Sarsour, who's been actively endorsing him and campaigning for him. Um, he's a Soros scholar, so, uh, this is, they're already advertising as the next Muslim, as the first Muslim governor. Um, and so this is a big deal. And I, everybody says, oh, it's going to be Gretchen. No, Gretchen's on her fourth campaign manager. And Gretchen, if anybody who served with her, she's Hillary 2.0. This guy's Barack 2.0. We know how that story went out, right? So I'm, I'm telling you, what, he won't win the general election. Um, at least not if I'm running against them because you got to take a stand on some of this. You got to provide some right. contrast or else you don't stand a chance. But uh, he will win the Democratic nomination, I believe.